Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. So this is an exciting week. This is the third in a three-part series brought to you by the Maya Not about Shabbat, because this week is Shabbat UK, the 13th and the 14th of May. And if you haven't made any plans yet, then please check out the United Synagogue website to find out what's going on in your area. So I was asked to give a talk about Shabbat and it got me thinking about what Shabbat actually means to me which is not something I think about very often. I'll tell you why. I grew up religious and Shabbat is something that's been part of my life since always. Um, you know, every week, as far back as I can remember, I have kept Shabbat. And in much the same way as many other things that you do every day or every week, you don't really think about them. If somebody says to you, you know, what does eating a meal three times a day mean to you? It's not something that I think about, you just do it. So Shabbat was something that I just did or do. And the first time I really had to think about it was in my first month of university. I went to university, which obviously started uh, at the end of September. And as it turns out, like most years, the first few weeks, there were loads of Chagim, there was Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. And I ended up missing loads of university. And I guess the other students noticed. And not only that, every Friday afternoon, I left early. And eventually, one guy plucked up the courage to ask me, where do you go? Why are you leaving early every Friday? I've noticed that we're not here much. So I explained to him, well, I'm Jewish. And at, on Friday night from sundown until the end of Saturday, nightfall, it's Shabbat for us. It's the Sabbath and we spend time at home. He said, right, I've heard a bit about this Sabbath. So correct me if I'm wrong, is that is the reason you leave early because you don't travel? So I said, yep, that's right, we don't travel. He said, and I heard this thing that you don't cook either. I said, no, that's right, we don't cook on the Sabbath. And he carries on, he said, and I've, I've got a couple of Jewish friends and they say you don't speak on the phone. I was like, right, we don't speak on the phone. He's like, so, sorry, forgive me for asking, but what do you do all day? You can't go anywhere. You can't eat any hot food. And you can't phone anyone. It sounds like the most boring day ever. And I was actually blown away that that was his take on it because that was completely not my experience. I've never thought about it in that way. But he happened to pick up on all the things that we don't do. So I explained, you know, you might have misunderstood. We, we don't just have to stay at home. We can leave the house. We, we walk places and, you know, walking's a nice thing to do. Um, he's like, okay, so where do you go? So I explained, you know, we go to synagogue, we go to friends, we go to family. It's like actually a really sociable time. You get to see loads more people than you do normally during the week. I said, okay. And what about this hot food thing? I was like, no, no, we do have hot food. We, we uh, can reheat food in other ways. We just don't cook it on the day. So then, you know, we're more relaxed. Everything's prepared in advance. I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense. He said, so like during this family time, do you like sit and watch TV together? What do you do? I'm like, no, we actually, we don't watch TV. You don't watch TV? So what do you do during the family time? So I said, you know, we sit around, we play games, we have conversations. It's like a really nice time, actually, to catch up with people. You know, the week's busy, and this way we all get to sit around, and like no one's on their phone, and no one's taking work calls, and, you know, people actually get a chance to really interact. It's like, huh, okay, interesting. And it occurred to me, it's one of those things that, it sounds like a list of things that you can't do. And to really appreciate what that means, what Shabbat means, you actually have to experience it. There's no way of just verbalizing it, explaining it. There's a certain atmosphere that's just indescribable. And without actually experiencing it, there's just, it's really difficult to understand. It sounds quite like, you know, the kind of day where, you know, you're not doing very much, but actually the not doing very much really enhances the day. And I think it began to mean even more to me when my husband started work, he was working crazy hours and it would get to Friday. He used to work till about 3 a.m. some nights. He'd be in the middle of a really, really important business deal. But all of his colleagues knew he gets to sundown on Friday and not on, turns into a pumpkin. No, not really. But they knew that, you know, he's not going to take any work calls. He's not going to answer emails. And he just completely switches off. And I remember both of us being so thankful that there is one day in the week that he can do that. 
because otherwise it would be endless. There would be no week end. There would be no end to the week, which is, I think, the experience of many of his colleagues, apart from one who, interestingly enough, is not Jewish, but has taken upon himself to eat Shabbat dinner. They actually call it Shabbat dinner. He and his wife sit down to a Friday night dinner every week with chicken soup and chicken and salt beef and potatoes. Uh, you know, really old school Jewish traditional meal because he actually really sees the value in it. He came across this idea and he's like, I just love that idea of just sitting down and having family time. So there you go. It is actually quite appealing. So I was talking a bit about <laughs> why it's important to me. I want to um, look a bit more into what is the point of it, not just my take on it, but actually the Torah's take on it. So the title that I gave was, have you tried switching it off and on again? which is a phrase that we come across quite often. We know whenever our computer's not working or our phone's not working, we phone up IT support and what do they say? Have you tried switching it off and on again? That's always the first thing they ask. Why? Because your device has been working too hard. It's overloaded. It needs downtime. It needs time to switch off and recuperate. And human beings are exactly the same. We work in much the same way and we also need downtime and we also need time to switch off and recuperate. So Shabbat is almost an automatic reset button. It marks the end of one week and the beginning of the other week, the next week. And within it, there's built in time for reflection. What was good about my week? What could I do better next week? How can I make my next week even better than this week? So let's take a look actually at the very first verse in the whole of the Torah. So this is a fairly well-known one. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the obvious question really is, why? why? Why did he do that? Why did he decide to create heaven and earth? Luckily, our famous commentator Rashi comes along, and this is the second Rashi on the whole Torah, and he explains that this phrase in the beginning, voracious, God created, is actually a condensed form of the phrase bishvil racious, for the sake of racious. So he says there's two things that are called racious. One is racious, Darko, is the beginning of God's way, which is the Torah. And the second one is racious to Vuoso, which is the beginning of God's increase is translated as, and that is the Jewish people. So these are the two things that God created the world for, for the sake of the Torah and for the sake of the Jewish people. Now, when did this actually come into actualization? So he's decided he's created the world, creating the world, and he's doing it for the sake of these two things, for the sake of Torah and for the sake of the Jewish people. Now, if you think about it, what we recently celebrated Pesach, Passover, and when we celebrated Passover, that was the story of the beginning, the birth of the Jewish people. That is when we became God's nation. He took us out with miracles. He saved us from the Egyptians and we left as one people. That is when we became the Bnei Israel, the Jewish people. And we're in this time period now where we're counting up to the next festival to Shavuot. And in <coughs> the seven weeks between Pesach and Shavuot, and that is the time that God actually gave us the Torah. So actually, the pivotal moment in history, the moment that God's been waiting for since the beginning of time, the whole reason for, his exist for the world's existence happens at Shavuot, because that's the coming together of these two elements. There's the Jewish people with the combination, and he gets to give us the Torah. So this is what happens. When he gives us the Torah, he gives us the Ten Commandments, and one of those Ten Commandments is keeping Shabbat. And the set of the Ten Commandments is actually repeated twice in the Torah. There's one set in Exodus, in Shemos, and there's one set in Deuteronomy, in Devarim. And they're slightly different. And each time this mitzvah of Shabbat is given, a slightly different reason is given for it. And I think actually... <coughs> If we look at those reasons, they tie together quite nicely with what we've been saying so far. So the first one, remember the Shabbos day and keep it holy. And it says six days you should do labor and do all your work. But the seventh day, <coughs> sorry, is a Sabbath of your God. 
You shouldn't do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male, your female slave, your cattle, or the stranger who is within your settlement. For in six days, so this is the reason given now, in six days, God made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them and then rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the seventh day, the Shabbat, the Shabbat day, and he made it holy. <coughs> so we see the reason given in this set of um, Ten Commandments is that God created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh day. And that is why we rest on the seventh day. So that makes sense. But if you think about it, I actually think it's quite incredible that the whole world agrees on this one thing. I can't think of anything else that the whole world agrees on. You know, even that the earth is round, you know, you're going to get these flat earthers arguing. I don't know anyone that disagrees about a seven day week. And if you think about it, it makes no logical sense whatsoever. I understand why the year is 365 days. That's how long it takes for the earth to go around the sun. I understand why a month is 28-ish days. That is how long it takes for the moon to go around the earth. But there's no logical reason why a week should be seven days. That makes no sense whatsoever. It does, it's not a good number. Seven is just not a good number mathematically. It doesn't fit exactly into a month, doesn't fit exactly into a year. Doesn't really make any sense. Not only do we all agree that it's seven days long, we all agree what day of the week it is. There's no one in other parts of the world that are keeping Tuesday on a Friday or Friday on a Sunday. Everyone agrees what day of the week it is. Like that's pretty impressive that everyone has been on the same page counting from the beginning of time and we all agree what day of the week it is. That's incredible. I think that in itself is proof that God created the world in seven days. Otherwise, why else are we keeping these seven, the seven days? It doesn't really make any sense that that's what the whole world agrees on. And so the fact that we keep Shabbat on, <coughs> on the seventh day is a testimony to the fact that we believe that God created the world. And not only that, that he created it for a reason, the reasons we've just said, to give the terror to the Jewish people. Let's take a look at the second um, reference to Shabbat. This is in Deuteronomy, and you'll see it's slightly different. It says, Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is Shabbat of the Lord. <laughs> you shall not do any work. You, son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your ox or your ass, any of your cattle, or the stranger in your settlements. <coughs> so that your male and female slave may rest as you do. So that's nice, everyone gets a rest. And now the reason is given. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and your God freed you from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. So we see it's actually a different reason given. The first time we saw the reason given for keeping Shabbat was because God created the world in seven days. This time we're saying the reason we keep Shabbat is because God took us out of Egypt. And really, if we tie these two ideas together, which we actually do on Friday night Kiddush, um, we make reference to both of these ideas when we say Zecha Lamas Hebraishis, remembrance of the creation, and Zecha Litsias Mitzrayim, a remembrance of leaving Egypt. And that moment when Shabbat comes in and you light the candles and you sit down to your Friday night dinner, Again, it, it's not something that you can describe in words. There's a certain atmosphere that the moment you light the candles, you find the house is not completely calm, but a few moments ago it was chaos. And suddenly there's this new atmosphere where everyone just feels Shabbat Shalom, or good Shabbos, however you say it. It feels very different. And it's something that you just have to experience for yourself. And I think the reason is, that this is the moment that we press our reset button, as we said at the beginning. In that moment, if we combine these two reasons given together, <laughs> we are tapping back into the moment that God created the world, <coughs> and also to the moment that he created our nation. And anything that goes wrong in the past, that, you know, that's happened in the past week, it becomes irrelevant because that week's finished and a new week's beginning. And we can tap back into that potential that God saw in each and every one of us when he chose to create us. And we have time to sit and reflect without the pressures of real life, 
and work or school or the news or politics and think, what can I achieve this week? What am I actually here to do? It doesn't matter if you've never kept Shabbat before because each week there's another one. They roll around every seven days. But they arrive without fail and each one is a new opportunity, a new reset button. And I want to just take this text one step further, because if you see in both of the texts we looked at, <coughs> it gives a long list of who to include in your Shabbat. It's not, it is a personal reset button, but it's not only a personal reset button. At the same time, we are um, including all these other people in our Shabbat, and that really enhances the experience. So one final story to end off with is that whilst I was in university, again, I was only there for three years, but a lot happened in that time. So there's this guy on my course called Simon. Simon's not Jewish. I was the only person on my course who was Jewish. And every time there was a JSOC event, anything going on at her house, without fail, Simon would come to tell me about it. And he'd say, do you want to go to this event? You know, JSOC's putting on this event. It's really important that we go. There's a Friday night dinner. There's Boots for Jews. You know, whatever it was, he'd always come and tell me about it. And he was always going to the event. And eventually I said, Simon, what's going on here? Why, why do you go to all of these Jewish events? I actually asked him, do you want to convert? What, what's going on? So he explained, I just... I'm only friends with Jews. I really like Jews. I was like, well, why? What is it about it? He said, well, you know what it is? I made friends with like one or two people that were in school with me and they were Jewish. And once I became friends with them, I met their friends. And then I met their friends. And it's like this whole network, like as soon as you're kind of in that network and you know one Jew, it kind of feels like you know everyone and you just feel like you're part of this bigger thing like you can just go up to anyone else and they're Jewish and like you just automatically you have things in common you have people in common you have events in common I just I never had that I never had that sense of belonging before and that is what Judaism is to me I was like wow that's like that's quite amazing that that is what he thinks Judaism is and I, I think he's right actually that it does feel like that. It's like an automatic membership that you feel like as soon as you find somebody new, you meet someone on the street or you're away on holiday, you find out that they're Jewish. And you're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? Oh, okay. You know, you've got lots of things in common. You might have people in common. You might have, you know, shared experiences. <coughs> and you feel an automatic sense of connection. So one thing that I wanted to end off by saying is that We've got Shabbat UK coming this um, this Friday, the 13th. And if you haven't made plans yet, it's not too late. You can always invite somebody over to you, friends, family, reach out to people who you think might enjoy the company, or you could reach out to your local synagogue and find out what they've got going on. There's lots of events going on all over the UK. And it's one of those things that... It's an amazing thing to do, even on your own, but even nicer to do with friends and family. So wherever you are, have a Shabbat Shalom and a really happy and meaningful Shabbat UK. Thanks for listening.